Oh, anyway, I can tell you how fast I'm going on, on this screen. And I'm going too slow at the bottom. I'm not putting enough effort into it. Frank has decided he wants to enter the world's toughest ocean race. I can't sleep. All I think about is rowing the Atlantic. What's really, really good about it is it, you can do it without somebody holding your hand. If you want to go and climb Mount Everest, you can't just go and do it. In December this year, Frank will embark on his biggest adventure yet, as he will join the world's elite and attempt to row solo 3,000 miles across the Atlantic Ocean in the Talisker Whiskey Atlantic Challenge. Nice and comfortable. I don't want to be last. I want to be in with the mix. Some might say it's impossible. <laughs> and are willing to wager a small fortune to prove Frank wrong. So he says, if you're going to do it, he says, I'll give you half a million pounds. Well, I'm going to tell through four. When he sets his mind to do something, he does it. In 2017, Go. Frank became the oldest contestant ever to compete on the island with Bear Grylls. All we saw of him was he came on the boat that was taking us out. He got off the boat and had a cup of tea while we carried on him. And it was all for, all for the camera and I was not impressed. But can he now become the oldest man ever to row the Atlantic? I've done 80,000 miles sailing. You'd find it really difficult to find something that's done more than 60,000 miles and I've done 80. My, my first voyage was around the world to sail around North America and South America. There's only 10 men in the world ever done that. But there's only one man ever done it in a figure of eight, which is what I've done. There's only one man in the world done that to me. When I, when I was 38, we decided to buy a yacht. Got more adventurous from sailing. I sailed around Ireland. I met a bloke in a pub who just sailed the Atlantic. I thought, wow, you know, well, I thought you had to be really clever to do things like that. I didn't think it was somebody like me that could do it. In 2000, I set off and sailed across the Atlantic and carried on around the world. This will be 10 times worse than that because I've got to do something. When, when you're sailing, you just have to sit there. During my adventures, I've, I've never felt fear. It's all about preparation. I've had to look at what other people have done and take advice off the race organisers. So I've been introduced to a bloke called Gus Barton. I have a training regime which he has given me. To there, shot, arms away, arms away first, then the hit, then in. He That's said, the it. first thing we've got to sort out is your core. He said, you're moving around all the time, all the time. He said, you're moving around. He says, well, we've got to get your core strength. So I'm, I'm doing, doing all kinds of things, stretching, all kinds of things on my hands and knees. Back onto it, touch, and then drive, looking straight ahead out that window. The whole body moves as well. In you go, in you go, in you go. I wish I'd not made this bet. <laughs> that all feels doable. Oh, yeah. The... I do my training here at home. If it hurts and it's hard to do, it's good. I'm trying to lose a bit of weight, I want to lose a little bit of fat and I want to get, get, gain muscle. I'll tell you what I can, I can feel, it's when I come to a road junction and you've got, you've got to go right back. I can, I, I can see traffic now, so I'm really, really happy with the way I'm coming on. <laughs> Try to get to my elbow to touch the ground and I've not done it yet, I might be able to do it. Oh, that was close. To qualify for this race, you've got to do 120 hours on the boat. Bloody hell, it's tight in there! <laughs> of course, when I'm rowing in the ocean, it'll be nothing like this at all. It'll be as rough as hell. I don't, I don't know what my typical day is going to be like when I'm rowing because um, I've not done it before. But it's all about just getting there, really, to get that big box in life. I need to eat 60 calories per kilo of body weight. That's probably double what I normally eat. And also, it's got to be freeze-dried because I've got to reduce the weight of the boat. Iceland are going to freeze-dry me some Iceland pizzas. How about that? But frozen pizzas aren't the only incentive from Iceland CEO Sir Malcolm Walker, as Frank found out when he wrote to him to ask for some friendly advice. When I sent Malcolm the email, I did not expect him to come along with half a million pounds. And I didn't see his eyes when he said it. So I went to him. And I told him I'd come to see his eyes. He said, I'll give you a letter. <laughs> there yeah, there's a letter. Half a million pounds. That's going to concentrate my mind when I'm going into it. I can't back out now. Frank's voyage will be entirely self-funded and he intends to give every last penny of the money he raises to a charity close to his heart. I thought, well, I have more friends now who are affected by Alzheimer's than any other disease. As a charity, Alzheimer's Research can't exist without people like Frank doing these incredible challenges. It's going to change so many lives. When he was 50, there was four friends who did the London Marathon, and out of the four of them, there's only one that's not been ill. 
and life's too short, so do it while you can do it. I can remember in 1967 when Shea Blythe and Captain John Ridgway rode the Atlantic. I thought, wow, these must be absolute supermen. I can't believe at the age of 70, I'm undertaking this, this thing that they did, you know. I get the buzz out of that. Not many people could take on something like this. I had a new knee fitted only about 10 months ago. I don't see it being anything really, really outstandingly special. I'm just a bloke doing something. This is half of going. That's all I want to do. The oldest man to do it and finish it and get into the pub. <laughs>